The Joint Commission has made several patient safety goals and as a clinical nurse specialist you may work in a facility that is under the accreditation of the Joint Commission and must adhere to these rules. But even those in other practice could use these goals as a standard in their practice to decrease the risk of injury to their patients. Um, these, to, these should have um, to adhere, strategies to adhere to these goals and um, educate the staff and also monitor for compliance. Some of the goals that have been set are identifying patients correctly, improving effective communication, removing concentrated electrolytes from the nursing units, a checklist prior to beginning surgery, decreasing falls, and also complying with proper hand washing technique. When discussing identifying patients correctly, any time that there is contact with a patient, their identification should be confirmed. Um, patients should have an armband placed on them with a unique patient identifier. And especially when administering medications, blood products, or performing tests such as lab, works or lab work or any, um, any type of test, two patient identifiers should be um, checked, including the patient's name, looking at their armband, and asking the patient, it could be as simple as asking the patient to identify if their birthday, or you can look and match their medical record number to the medical record number on their armband. Another goal is to improve effective communication, and this deals um, mostly with physicians' orders when they give verbal or telephone orders. Staff should read back the order of, in some fashion to verify that what they heard is what the physician said. The physician should at that time confirm verifying the order is correct. There should be some type of system in place noting that the order was you know, verbal or t a telephone order and that it was read back and verified. Removing concentrated electrolytes is another patient safety goal. Um, electrolytes can be deadly when given um, in, in an incorrect form, such as a concentrated dose of potassium. And so it is um, a goal to not have that available easily um, so that an accident, accidental dose of an electrolyte such as potassium can be given. Another um, patient safety goal is a checklist beginning prior to surgery. This, prior to the patient going to surgery, there should be a checklist done to ensure that the proper documentation is available with the patient on the chart, um, such as the proper consent and that it's signed and is correct, and that the patient's, sometimes facilities require that the uh, history and physical be available on the chart. Any uh, lab work that is necessary or any um, any other test results should be available. Also, there should be um, a marking of the surgical site um, if there are multiple sites available, such as a left arm or um, right arm. And the patient should be um, a part of that if they can, are at all possible to verify that what you're marking or let them mark in some fashion that the site is correct. And just prior to beginning the surgery, there should be a process in place to have some sort of timeout procedure where um, the entire surgical team stops and verifies that they have the right patient in the right surgery in the right surgical site and that um, all of the needed equipment or implants are available and that if uh, there is any allergies or medical concerns, those should be noted at that time. Another safety goal is to decrease falls in a facility. Uh, there should be some type of procedure in place to assess the risk of fall or fall risk in patients and identify those patients at high risk and steps be taken to prevent this. Also, compliance with proper hand washing technique is another patient safety goal 
and it should be uh, monitored and made known to the patients that it is important that healthcare providers uh, do wash their hands and use proper technique when uh, washing their hands after any patient contact.